In this video we're going to see the Piotnet Grid Builder and how it can work with the Oxygen Repeater element. Hi, my name is Stratos and I'm constantly producing video tutorials about Oxygen. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Piotnet Grid Builder a couple of days ago released a new version and if we go to the change log we're going to see that the 1.0.17 version says that it can filter now uh, Oxygen Repeater, Oxygen Easy Post and the Oxygen WooCommerce product list. Now this version had a problem and they released an update with 1.0.18 and this has fixed the issue that they had with the Oxygen Repeater. So if you are using uh, Piotnet Grid be sure to update to the latest version or else it will not work uh, as you want. Now let's go and see the price. Uh, at this moment they have a lifetime deal for $119 for 100 websites. Okay, let's close these two tabs. So this is the page that we're going to work and we have here some projects as you can see and this is a custom post type. It's using uh, the repeater element and it's fetching us the posts here. So what we're going to do is going into the back end and we're going straight down that says Piotnet Grid and we're going into facets. I'm going to open that in a new tab and here I'm going to add new and I'm going to select here and type the name and that will be the project filter. Project filters, let's go with that. You can name it uh, whatever you want. So let's publish that and I'm going to open that in a new tab with Oxygen and back to the Piotnet Grid. Let's edit with Piotnet Grid. Here we're going to create our facets. And the first thing that we're going to do is grab a section and we're going to drop it inside. Okay, now that the section is inside, I'm going to click here and click the facets and drag and drop it inside the section. And here let's start uh, with the facet name. This will be a category. Okay, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put that also as a facet label, but I don't want the label to be sewed up in the front end, so I'm going to hide that. And then for the facet action, you can select filter, you can select load or sort. I'm going to leave it as filter. After that, the facet placeholder will be all for everything. And then since it is a select, if you click it, you will see all the other terms. You can also select something different for the filter type and we have slider, radio, checkboxes, buttons, color picker, image select, search, date and A to Z. This is for sorting out. And I'm going to choose the buttons because I do like how they look. After that, as you can see, these are the buttons and I'm going to hide the choice count. I don't like that. Okay. And as you can see, we have multiple selections. So this is an end or an or if you want. Then we have the uh, filter data source, which can be taxonomy, post date, post field or author. Uh, sorry, custom, custom field and author. Here for the custom field, you can select whatever field you have from an ACF or a Metabox or something uh, custom made. Here we're going to select the taxonomy. After that we have the taxonomy and we're going to select and as you can see we have uh, many options here and I'm going to select the project category. This is the one that I want. After that I can click save. Also we have to exclude uh, taxonomy turns if we want and here the options are to add uh, custom images as our filters. So we're not going to do any of that. So by hitting save I have saved the facets and then I can go into the oxygen page. Here I'm going to structure and I have a section here. I'm going to add a new section. I'm going to put that on top. Okay, let's go up on top and here I'm going to click add and then click Piotnet Grid. Then I'm going to click the facets. I'm going to select the facet and I have only one at this moment, the project filters. And then I can select the apply for grid. Now the grid is if you go into the Piotnet grid, you will see here the grids. So you can select whatever grid you have. But uh, at this moment, I'm not using any grid from Piotnet grid. I'm using the oxygen repeater element. And this is the update. So we can select now the oxygen here. After that, it says that we have to use a unique ID that uh, will always start with the Piotnet grid hyphen ID hyphen and then the number. Now, 
uh, this I would like to be a little better. I would like to auto auto generate the uh, ID here, the unique ID, and of course it should be editable if you want to change that. But I would like that to be auto generated because I don't want every time to go into my facets and see whatever I have created and whatever ID I have used already because maybe I have used four or five different IDs and I can't remember uh, wh what was the last number that I used. So I would like something better inside here. Also, I don't know why we should write the PODNET grid hyphen ID hyphen. It should be easier if it was something like PG for PODNET grid hyphen ID hyphen, something like that. Uh, be sure to type correctly because if you misspell it, it will not work. So PODNET and it didn't get my N, PODNET. Uh, the end doesn't want to come and uh, of course you cannot copy it from here <laughs> this is not something that you can just copy so peernet grid hyphen 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 id hyphen okay and we're going to put one now if you go to the change log and you click the article for the oxygen it will say the peernet grid that uh, somewhere into the manual and you can copy that from their website but i was i wish i could do that also from here i would like to copy it here or at least have it auto regenerate auto generated and i don't have to remember every time the last number that i used so we have the putnet grid hyphen id hyphen one i'm going to copy that and I'm going to select the repeater element. So let's go into the section, let's go into the repeater, and I have to go into here to the classes, and I'm going to paste that inside here. I'm going to add classes, and this means that now these two are connected. So I'm going to save that as it is, and I'm going into the front end. I'm going to refresh, and I'm going to see right away if it works, if it works. So let's click the competition, and let's see, yeah, it filters out the results. This is the leisure, this is re re residential, and then the retail. So the filter is working fine. After that, we can go and style it as we want. Of course, the styling cannot be happened inside the oxygen uh, page here. You have to go inside the grid builder and you have it styled here, which is a little bit difficult because you don't know the page that is inside. So you don't have anything to work with. You have to save it every time, go into the front end, refresh and see how it looks. Then make another change and do the same. The only thing that you can uh, select inside the oxygen is the element uh, the whole element so I can select the background but this will be for the whole element not the buttons not the choices that I have here I cannot edit the colors or the size or anything else or the spacing inside here I can only uh, play with how this element the whole element looks like and not uh, every choice that I have inside here so I have to go here and I have to select here for those to be in the middle or something different. If we go to the style, we will see the facet label and I don't have any because I hid, I have hidden it. So let's go for the facet buttons and here I can select that to be in the center. After that, I can go and select if I want some padding. This is the padding inside the buttons inside here. Then we have the item spacing. I can go for zero and this will look like this. We don't have any space here. Also, they have some border radius, as you can see, so I can go and select the zero here and they will be uh, like sharp corners like that. And you can select the colors for the uncheck and checked uh, options that we have here. Let's save that once again. And let's go into the front end and refresh here. And as we can see now, they are connected here and we have no radius here. If we want to put that in the middle, we have to cl click here and we have to select, of course, the center and this will go into the middle. So I can go something like that and I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm not going to style it anymore. So this is how it looks. Let's refresh that and let's see one more time that we have here the filters and they're working fine. OK, now let's go into the shop page and here we have the shop page. And as you can see, we have already the items from uh, the dummy items from the WooCommerce. And let's go back here. Let's close that. Let's cl let's close also this one. And let's go into the oxygen templates. And I'm going to edit the project, the product archive. This is the one. So let's edit that. And let's go here into the PeerNet Grid facets, and we're going to create something new. 
Let's open the product archive page with Oxygen and let's go back to the facets, add new. And here we're going to have something like uh, product filters. Filters, okay. Let's publish that. Edit with Oxygen, and I want to refresh the product page here, the archive page, because I didn't save the uh, the facet before this has loaded. So let's refresh that. Okay, now that we are here, let's grab a section, and we're going to put that inside here. And after that, we're going to go here, grab a facet, and put that in here. Okay, so the facet name will be color, because I do know that those uh, products have a color attribute, so color. The facet label will be color. Okay, we have a filter and here we're going to leave it as select. No, let's change that to check boxes and uh, that way we can see all the results that we have. And after that, I'm go not going to show the choices count. I'm going not going to. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And for the taxonomy, I'm going to select here and I'm going to select the product color. This is how it's going to be. Let's save that and let's go back on top and I'm going to go and grab a new facet also and I'm going to put that underneath that. And here I have the size also attribute that I want to filter out. So let's select here and select size. Size. Okay, the label will be size as well. And remember that the facet name must be unique for the whole website, okay, in order for that to work. Then we have the filters, then we have also here something like a checkboxes. I'm going to leave it as checkboxes that also, and I'm going to select here to have the product size. Okay, let's save that. And now I can go into the oxygen and let's go into the structure. Let's open the section. Inside the section, I'm going to add two columns. This is the columns. Okay, I'm going for 4060 and open that. And I'm going to grab the product and I'm going to put that on the bottom div inside here. Okay, let's go into the div and put that to be width of 20, something like that. And inside here, I'm going to add the facet. So let's go for the Pyramid Grid and let's select here the facet. Okay, I'm going to select the product filter and the apply for grid will be again oxygen. Okay, so we're going to type here the Pyotnet grid ID. Pyotnet grid, I'm missing an I, okay, hyphen ID, hyphen two. Okay, let's copy that. Pyotnet grid, Okay, I have typed it correctly. So let's go to the repeater element, the product list. It's not the repeater element, it's a product list. And I'm going to click here and add that class here. Add the class and now let's save that. And let's go into the front end and refresh the page. Okay, now that I have here everything, I can select the blue and this will filter out the results and will show me only the blue. Now I can also select to have the large and this means that those two are going to be combined into one. So we have only the blue color and the size is large. If I unselect the blue here, we will see all the products that are in large size, but we do have only one product in large size in the whole shop. So this is why we cannot see anything different. So let's uncheck this to see all the products. And we're going also to add something else inside here. Let's click here and let's go for the active facets and I'm going to put that on top. Okay, so the alignment is the default and I'm going to save that and I'm not going to style the colors, but if you want, you can just click it and then go into style, style and then select the text color and the background color and uh, have it as you want. So let's uh, save that again. And let's go into the front end and refresh here. Okay, so now whenever I select something here, as you can see, this will drop me the blue here. This is the item that I have selected. And I can go here and remove it from here. 
Also, you can create uh, here a clear all button or you can do something different and have here a search option and you can do a search filter and everything will work fine. So as you can see, the product is working great. Uh, we don't have any problems with that. Uh, I know that the UI and the UX is not too great and I don't like the fact that you have to go back and forth in order to style it. And here, you, when you're styling the product, you don't have the page uh, layout here. You don't have uh, the option to see the page when you're styling all the forms here. And I know also that uh, there are some things that they could improve, but uh, for the price that they have the grid uh, builder, I think it's a bargain. Uh, no question asked. You can just buy it and use it in whichever site that you want. Okay, so that was the video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.